little country lane, these two potholes are very, very common. Let's show you what these done to Jimmy's van. Keep watching. Well, as you can see, you've got one after another here, down a little narrow road like this. Jimmy pulled to one side to let a car go through, because this is only a narrow little road. Front wheel, straight along both of these, and let's go and have a look now, and see what damage get these in. have done get in. to Jimmy's get car. In. And if you actually look, there's three in the road here. So the first thing to do is to get the, the wheel off, get the car up in the air, and then we'll be able to see where we are. Show you what I mean. See you in a minute. I don't know whether you can actually see the weird angle the wheel's sitting at. I'll show you in a minute, but again, the only thing holding this lot together, it should be the uh, shock absorber piston going through the spring, but it, that's broken. I think that's broken. So the spring is the only thing holding it together. I've got to be careful here, because uh, it could uh, fly off. All right, let's show you what we got under here. Oh, it's a bit dark, but uh, I think you're getting the message. But uh, look, up here, look. I can feel the top of the shock absorber there. So that spring, as I say, is under tension. If I drop this down, what normally happens is you unbolt the drop link bar there and these two bolts here, you're able to pull the hub away and this stays contained in, in one unit. But we haven't got that support there because as I say, this is a broken straight off there. So I'm going to have to possibly maybe hold this up with a bit or maybe try and get the clamp on there to try and compress this spring. I brought a, a spring compressor so again this is very much suck it and see. There's no correct procedure here because as I say, because taking it out the standard way, undoing that first, undoing these and putting this out, it's just going to make the whole lot go ping. So I can't actually do that in this case. So bear with me, I'll set myself up and we'll try and get a spring compressor on this spring so that I can re release these bolts and that bolt there. And coming in the bonnet area, you've got this clamp here that uh, just sort of clamps together and holds the top strut in place in the top here. So this will also have to come off as well. It's just a plastic clip, but we'll deal, we'll deal with that in a minute. Right, okay, I've given these a squirt. I've just cracked them and I've given them a wire brush down as well, always advisable. But, uh, I've tried getting these spring compressors on the springs, there's no room to get them in there, plus it's at such a funny angle, the only thing I've got to do is to take the bolts out or loosen these off, loosen that off, and then support the hub with a jack or a bottle jack or something, so I'm going to have to do that, I'm just going to crack these off first, which I have done, and uh, give them a lubrication, so <sighs> that's what we've got to do. Right, so in this case, because our shock absorber is broken, I don't want to take that fully off yet until I get a jack support in the actual hub underneath, because that looks like that's the only thing stopping it coming this way, the spring force in this way. So I'm going to support that first, as I say, and then uh, then we'll undo that nut fully. Right, I've just got this little bottle jack underneath the hub, and as you can see, I'm just taking it up a bit. So hopefully, Take the tension off of that up there. That spring's really on the wonky, and I'm also not happy with it. So I'm putting some safety glasses on as well, just in case, just to take a bit of pressure off. I think. All right, okay. It would be handy to have two people here, so someone could just hold that in there, you know. Because I know that when I uh, undo this bolt, maybe it's going to uh, want to slide off the end of that. Let's have a look. 
Damn it, these bloody nuts are hard. Put some more squirt on there. Never nice, never nice. Bit of lubrication. Thing is, I don't think I've got the right size spanner holding back on that back nut because uh, Jimmy's got my 18 mil, which I think that is at the back at work. And you have to overcome problems, as you know. And this is a problem. Holding back on a nut that's tight, which you can't bloody undo. Typical, isn't it? I don't know, see, I don't think I'll be able to get an adjustable in there. I may be able to. As I say, this is pulling off at an angle. Oh, that's what I mean, if you've got your air gun here, you can uh, spin it off pretty quick. She comes. Could have done with a longer lever and all. <clears throat> ah, see what I mean? You're going to skin knuckles easily doing a job like this if you ain't careful. <sighs> all because I haven't got the right blinking spanner. See, that's a 19mm, it's too big. Let me see if I can find an adjustable. Just enough with that. Find the flats. Where's the flats to that? Again, I'm pulling it a bloody. See, it's tightened up again. Look, I need a longer lever. You're fighting all the time with things like this, you know. Oh, no, that's come off the back, you see. All oh, the joys of working in your drive with not all the right tools available. All right, hang on for a minute. I've got to have a rethink on this. I can't carry on like this. Right, well, I found an old Imperial spanner that's gone on there, and I've had to hammer it on. Don't forget, this ain't a blinking how-to video, by the way. This is how I'm coming up against problems and having to get over them. So, as I say, this ain't a how-to. Oh, it's come off. So this is typical of the sort of thing you can come up against, I tell you. One nut can do this to you. One bloody nut. <clears throat> Coming off again. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? And this is with cleaning threads up. I wonder if I can try and do it up there the other way. But that's going to be tight as well, you see. <clears throat> We're at the point of no return, I'm afraid. I'm going to have to go and get the right span up with this. Messing about with odd sizes ain't, ain't the way to do it. Right, see you shortly. Right, I was able to get one of those box spanners on there. And hopefully that's holding it. There we go. That's really tight, that thread, isn't it? And what I'm also doing is lifting up the bolt as well. That's all right. It's going. It's going. But there is a lot of tension on this bolt, as I said to you. And you can't get a spanner on because it's tipping at an angle. What needs to happen? Is that needs to now I've taken the tension off of that now look by jacking up that hub and now hopefully get that in there there we go just tighten it up around there again make sure we get it nicely on there Wedge it on the top there and oh it's just tight threads look. 
Now see how tight that is. You imagine trying to do that with just a ratchet. Now, as I say, you've got to be careful here because this could just ping off. So I'm putting my glasses back on. I've had to take them off because they were steaming up. Here we go. There we go, here we go. Here we go. So you always a way around the problems. Right, that nuts off now, look. Okay. And I've got to be very careful here now. As I say, because that spring could just pop out at me. The only thing saving me at the moment is that I've got that jacked up. See, that's out now, look. Take that a bit more. One more thread, look. There we go. That's the drop link out. In actual fact, that drop link's at it as well. There's loads of movement in that bottom. He said he had a bit of a knock, and that's what it is. So really, he needs a new drop link. Now, the only thing holding this now are these two bolts here. Again, this is going to want to shoot out, so I've got to be careful. But before I do that, I've got to disconnect this clip and pipe from the actual strut itself. Right, so, clip. Just put a bit of lube on that. And behind there where that clip attaches to the bracket. And apparently all you do is you push in and that should lift out of there. But as you can imagine, it's all corroded. All dust is in there. That pushes in alright. Always something in there, always something. There we go, there it comes. I just got the clip out. There you go, look, it lifts off, look. That's just all dirty, look, that's all that was. So that's off of there. And now I've got to pull this clip off of here. Which again is easier said than done. Because that's going to be corroded as well. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, can you? Nearly swollen. There we go. Look. Remember what way it goes in that way. And then hopefully, this should pull out the front. There we go. And then that leads out of there. That's the strut free now, apart from these two bolts. But as I say, this is going to be the dodgy bit because uh, we're under spring tension now. I'm just wondering now, as the drop link's not in there, if I let this down now, maybe the spring will take its tension off. And uh, hopefully, that tension will come off that spring. Let's put my glasses back on. I have to keep taking them off because I keep frosting up with a sweat because I'm sweating out here. Right, here we go, gently down. Tension's coming off the spring. And technically speaking, there's no reason why it shouldn't drop down fully. I'm making sure the drive shaft don't go at a funny angle. Yeah, there's not there's tension on the spring obviously, but not a lot. I can actually take that jack out of the way now, I think. And uh, just give them threads a squirt. Where they're going to go through, obviously. And give them a tap with a rubber mallet. If I can find it. There we go, look. Right, okay, so they're still under tension, but not a lot. I'm just going to give them a poke through with the screwdriver there we go I'm 
still expecting that to be under tension, which it is, obviously. That's why they're not falling straight out. So I've got to be careful here. There we go, look. I don't want to damage the fridge, you see, so just pushing that in allows me to wind it out. So I'm going to choose that option in case I take the top off the threads. Again, it's just... It never happens as in, the, as in the book. There's always a problem, especially when you're dealing with older vehicles that have got corrosion and you've got blinking threads all blocked up. So that's that one out. That's tight. I could do with a drift here, but I haven't got a blinking drift here. I've just got this Aida screwdriver. Which is... Uh, out. Right, that's out. There's nothing holding that strut in now apart from that gap, what it sits in. So, I've got to be careful here. There we go, it's dropping down. It's dropping down. There we go. Hopefully you can see what I'm having to deal with here. So let's just move that down. Hang on, that springs, look, look at that, that, that shouldn't just fall out like that, because technically speaking, the top is uh, held in. Hang on, look at that, look. Here we go, look at that, look. That, believe it or not, is the top of the strut, the nut, right at the top, that pulls out, you see, look. In fact, it's not the top that's broken, it's not the strut that's broken, it's the actual around the support around the nut that's broken that nut's totally corroded look at the state of that look all right that's the next problem but going down a hole or bump has found a weakness in the suspension and it's obviously this has happened right let's have a tidy up and then we'll regather see you in a minute right so this is where the failures actually occurred up here you probably see there there's this uh clamp i was telling you about which i thought was missing but it's not but then you've got this cup mechanism around here with this uh, obviously that nut goes in there and bolts onto the strut which is still attached to the strut so this is actually broken away so we're going to need to get this out now and uh, that just involves opening up these clips at the side and separating this bit so I'm just going to do that now now as I say I'm just doing this in real time with real tools and as I said to you it's it's my way of getting over problems that I've come up against basically so you've got to you need two screwdrivers for this, hold on. Probably like you, I went onto YouTube to look for a tutorial myself, and all I found was a bloke with a ramp working in a garage with all the right tools available. Well, in real life, that don't happen, as you probably know. Especially if you're doing this sort of thing yourself in your drive, you could come up against with what I've come up with. So, there are. Two screwdrivers is easier than one. Right, so let's just undo that. There we go, just comes apart in two halves, look. Then this should drop out the bottom, I think, and this should have been attached to the shock. So if I put my hand underneath there, bring this out, and as you can probably see, it's this shock mount, and you probably can't see it, but in there, where it's welded, it's actually come adrift. So what he actually needs is one of these top mounts. So that's what he needs. He could have got away with a shock, but uh, we didn't know that, obviously, at the time, so he's got a new shock to go in there, and, uh, bottom half so I'm gonna have to tell him now he needs one of these and he needs a drop link well I have got an access to a welder but I'm not gonna try and mess about with that I'm not an expert welder at all and it's right down in this thing and this thing's basically pressed together yeah if I take that out of cover off there's no way you're gonna get in there and do a neat weld in there it's right in the tube and then it's pressed together so let's get on to him and uh, I'll probably have to end this video here and yeah, I think I will do a part two, just putting it back together. You might as well see that. But uh, as I say, we'll be putting the drop link on and also one of these. So we'll call this part one. And uh, this is the real way what you could come up against. Not the same as a manual, but uh, it's real life. Cheers. See you in the next video. Until then, bye for now.